Hi Field School, this is Mr. Rich with your weekly outdoor lesson. So today we're going to tour a park that's uh, basically in my neighborhood. It's only a short walk from our house uh, and my wife and I, Sarah, usually come down here uh, at least once a day. Sometimes I'm down here twice a day. This is a really exciting time of the year uh, because everything is starting to warm up. Our earth is warming up. The bugs are coming out. The birds are out. The plant life is coming out. Uh, so we're going to see signs of evidence of all that happening while we take this little tour. Along the way too, there is um, this trail is great because it's got a lot of interpretive signs so you can learn a lot about this area. So stay tuned for a little bit and we'll be right back. So along the Rogue River Nature Trail, there's a series of interpretive signs that points out what you might hear or see while doing this walk. The first one that we came across is the Nature Drum Corps about woodpeckers, which is perfect because it lines up to what we're learning all about birds this week. So listen carefully and you just might hear the drumming of woodpeckers overhead. These unique birds are specially designed to hammer on the outside of trees. In the spring, listen for the fast staccato drumming to find a mate. During the rest of the year, listen for the tapping as they look for insect invaders in the trees. So in the woods around here, there's a lot of different variety of trees, and one of which is the mighty oak. As you pass through the forest, take a look around you at the trees providing the roof over your head. Most of them belong to the oak family. Oaks are important for the animals living in the forest as they provide an abundance of acorns each year. Squirrels will store them away for use in the winter, deer will eat them to build up body fats, and even turkeys will eat them in great numbers. Not only are they excellent food, but if you are passing through in the winter, you may even see trees with their leaves still attached. Many oaks will not lose their leaves until the following spring. So the woods are coming alive right now. Uh, as you all know, we have winter here in Michigan. Everything's cold and gray and everything pretty much lies dormant. Well, as soon as the sun comes out and it starts to warm, the days get longer, uh, we start to see a lot of growth. So I've been coming here for the last uh, month or so and watching everything grow. And right now, you can definitely see signs of the skunk cabbage. So as you pass through this area, you may be looking over your shoulder for the skunk making the smell. Don't look too far because chances are you are smelling the plant which grows through this area in the spring and summer. Skunk cabbage is the earliest spring wildflower. Making its own heat, it can actually come up through the snow. The smell attracts insects who will, who will pollinate its flower. During the summer, you can see its large cabbage-like leaves poking up from the wet soils it loves so well. So the trail uh, ends up following the Rogue River and as you know from uh, a couple other lessons that we've done, uh, the salmon during the fall run up this river to spawn along with the steelhead in the spring. So most people are familiar with bird migrations but did you know that fish can migrate too? On the Rogue River there are two migrations each year. In the spring the rainbow trout or steelhead head upstream from Lake Michigan to lay their eggs and then head back to the lake. In the fall, King and Chinook salmon also make the journey home to the same place they were born. For them though, the trip is a one-way journey. When they have laid their eggs, they will die and become food for the variety of living organisms in the river. So we've learned a little bit about watersheds over the course of the year. At this point, the Rogue River has almost completed its journey from its humble beginnings far to the north of Grand Rapids. What you may not know is that the Rogue River is more than just a river. It is a network of other streams and runoff areas called a watershed. The Rogue River watershed drains the area covered in the map at the left. 167,625 acres in Kent, Montcalm, Muskegon, Nuego, and Ottawa counties.
So all the growth now that you see along the river plays a very important role. The vegetation along the edge of the Rogue River is very important. The trees and low vegetation along the river's edge trap sediments and other pollutants when the river is flooding. They also hold the water and do not allow it to run off into the river too rapidly, thus avoiding flooding. However, when this vegetation is removed, the chance of flooding downstream is increased. This is why homeowners along the river are encouraged to keep an edge between their landscaping and the water's edge. Not only does the vegetation trap and hold water, but it also acts as an umbrella for the river. By shading the river, the vegetation keeps the water temperature cooler. This cool water temperature allows cold water species of fish to live in the river. When the vegetation is cleared, the water warms and fish like trout and salmon can no longer use the river for spawning. Okay, field school, that ends the tour. Thank you very much for taking a hike with me. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you uh, get out and explore some woods that are located close to you. Have a great rest of your week.